long term investment, long term financing. Bank will charge you a higher interest rate. And you are actually raising at a very high cost. And the return that you earn for three years is much lower. So financing is higher, costly, high costly. And the investment that you make is low return. So there would be problem with your profitability. So when you are mismanaging capital, what I'm trying to say when you are mismanaging capital, you don't understand the size of the capital, the timing of the capital. Two major important things, size of the capital and timing of the capital. If you don't understand these two factors, you will make mistake. Often we discuss about long term capital management, but very less frequently, um, especially the large companies, they deal with working capital. Working capital is often synonymous to short term capital. Working capital is the capital that is generally in circulation. Let me repeat. This is a capital generally in circulation, meaning that you are generally everyday basis working with this capital. This is being circulated in your activities. You are using capital to pay for uh, expenses. You are using this capital to pay for salaries. You are using this capital to pay for raw materials and other purposes. So it's happening every week, every day. That's why we call it working capital. This is helping your everyday work. This capital is helping you to finance your everyday work. That's why we call it working capital. Now working capital can have both short term asset and liabilities. I will explain to you later how asset can be a capital as well. Short term asset can be a capital for short period of time and it can help you to finance your operation for short term purposes. So we will discuss in this chapter how short term asset and short term liability can be managed. What is the objective of working capital? Can effective management of short term assets and liabilities be used to finance the deficit of the farm? So if the farm is in deficit, they need money, whether we can use short term asset and liabilities to finance the company. Short term assets and liabilities are considered as working capital to efficiently financing the farm's operation. What are the items included? In the asset side, we have cash and marketable securities. This is the remember the cash balance. This can be used for everyday purposes. This can be used for everyday payments. You have inventory. Remember, inventory has a time issue, so you can start with raw materials and go up to finished product. So since time is involved here, you can actually delay the payment on inventory. So by delaying payment on inventory, you can actually you know manage this to to keep some capital with you. Let's say if 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 you are if you are producing raw materials. You are producing raw materials until the finished goods. Let's say you need uh, 200 days in order to do that. So you can now choose when you are going to pay for these raw materials. If you pay everything in the zero day, you do you cannot manage inventory for capital management. But you can actually negotiate with your raw material supplier that I will be actually paying you after 100 days. So for these 100 days, this raw materials payment or inventory payment can help you to manage your capital. Accounts receivable is the amount that you are going to receive from others. This is the way also you can help manage your capital. Uh, you can negotiate with your customer that look, if you can pay me early, I'll be able to pay my salaries and other expenses. So if you can collect your accounts receivable faster, it will help you as some capital because accounts receivable will go into cash and this cash can be used to pay for your expenses. So accounts receivable can also be one kind of capital. Also, there are ways to finance your company. You can use inventory to get a loan. You can also use accounts receivable to get a loan. I will, I will discuss about the loan issue later. And directly the short term liability, short term bank loan can be directly a short term capital. Accounts payable can be a short term capital also. Uh, there is another item I did not write here, accruals, accrued expense can be also a short term uh, liability. Accounts payable happens when you purchase on credit, meaning that you are not paying anything on cash. You will pay after 100 days, for example, for purchasing raw materials. So for the 100 days, you can use this fund for other purposes. Uh, instead of paying $10 million for your raw materials, you will pay it after 100 days. For the 100 days, you can use this $10 million for other purposes. That's how you use your capital. Short term loan is the last resort. 
bank loan is the last resort. If you cannot manage your capital using the internal item, you then go to a bank for short term loan. When you take short term loan, you can use the loan uh, and, and pay for your expenses. So we will try to see how each of these uh, asset and liability item can be managed. And we'll also take a number of examples and mini cases to help you understand the scenario. Through effective management of cash, what is a cash? Cash is a non-earning asset. When you have things in cash, it does not earn anything unless you are investing it and needed for regular activities. Cash is needed for payment of regular activities. You don't want to have too much of cash or too less in cash. If you have too much of cash, you are losing profit. If you, if you have too less in cash, you will have liquidity problem. So you need to choose an effective balance of cash. Inventory is the um, stock of your goods and raw materials. So inventory basically can have three different stages. You can have raw materials, can have the uh, work in process, inventory in progress, also can have finished goods. Um, for different other products, you may have other stages. Um, you know, if it is technology product, then you may have additional stages as well. So in inventory for manufacturing companies, you have at least three steps, three stages. And in these three stages, the stock uh, value, the value of the raw materials changes, value of the inventory changes depending on the stage that you cross, because every stage will add value. From raw materials to work in progress, there'll be some value added. From, raw, from work in progress to finished goods, there'll be some value added. So the cost of raw materials or the value of the raw materials will change. Accounts receivable and payables. Uh, you can manage account receivable and payable. These are basically bought or sold inventories on uh, credit. So you can you can buy raw materials on credit. You can also sell inventories on credit. If you sell inventories on credit, we call it receivable. And if you are buying inventories on credit, we call it payable. Finally, you have external short term financing generally from bank loans. You can go to the bank for uh, as a last resort, if other items cannot help you to manage your capital, you will go to the bank for loans. When the company is having financial difficulty, it will sort out things from internal funds. So you will you will most probably prefer internal funds first. Internal funds are these cash, inventory and account receivable and payable. If the internal fund is not enough, the last resort is to apply for bank loans to finance your deficit. So. Uh, you will talk to the bank as a last resort, as the last uh, method to apply to collect your loans or capital in order to pay for the expenses. The gross working capital is the uh, is called the total current asset. Total short term asset is called the gross working capital, and the net working capital, which is frequently used NWC, they call it net working capital, is the difference between total current asset and current liability. If you have positive networking capital, generally the company is considered to be efficient. They are good in uh, liquidity and also profitability. If the company has negative networking capital, meaning you have higher liability than asset, so the company might be inefficient or there are an indication that company is not managing funds properly. So your objective is to have a positive networking capital, meaning that your total asset, total current asset, should be higher than total current liabilities. This is often called the diamond or short term asset management. In a diamond of short term asset management, we basically step wise, we explain what happens to a company and what are the process they go through in order to manage their working capital. So let's say we start with a, a company called Colgate. I think you know Colgate, they, these people, uh, uh, they sell uh, different cosmetic products, including Colgate toothpaste, I think, paste, they call it. So let's, let's say this is, a, this, is a, this is called a red sensitive paste. Uh, it's a toothpaste uh, and, and it is for sensitive teeth or gum protection or something. And this company is uh, partly old. I think they, they, are, they are now owning also Palmoli, uh, is a I think Indian company. Uh, so Colgate Palmolive is producing red sensitive paste, toothpaste. So how the process goes on, they first talk to the supplier 
supplier supply with raw materials and bank provides them funds if, if needed. So when the raw material is supplied, inventory goes up and at the same time accounts payable goes up because they have purchased some credit. So they have to uh, pay after some time. And what they do is through the process, they, they do production using raw materials. And after production, the inventory value goes down because they are now selling product. The receivable goes up. If they sell on credit, receivable will go up. When the receivable goes up, definitely after the final sell, the final product reaches the customer. When the customer receives the product, they will sell, they, they will pay in cash. They will pay in cash or in time draft. These customers are not actually the ultimate customer. They are the reseller. A company does not directly deal with the customers. They sell it to reseller. Reseller will sell to real consumer. So when they sell it to customer, customer will pay in cash or they will pay with check. Uh, whenever they, they, the customer pays, receivable drops, cash value increases. And when it goes to the next stage, the company will use this cash to pay for the raw materials. So accounts payable will go down. Company will also lose some cash. And from this process, whatever cash is remaining, uh, some of the cash will be saved with the company and some cash will be used to pay for other expenses. They will pay some to supplier. They will pay some to uh, workers as salaries and other expenses. So from this process, some cash will be remaining. This cash will be the net cash inflow to the company, profit to the company from this cycle. This cycle is a continuous process. As long as you have production, you are again taking from raw materials from the supplier, you are producing, there is increase in receivable, the receivables are collected to cash. This cycle is often called a turnover cycle. They also call it cash conversion cycle. The turnover cycle, therefore, is the sell cycle, is a cycle that represents sales that uh, goes from investment in raw materials to convert it to cash. The faster you move this uh, cycle, let me show it to you. If you can do it faster, if a company can convert it faster, faster means if the entire process can be converted to cash, the faster you can do it, more cash is coming into the company. If you do it slow, somewhere it is stuck. Maybe it's stuck in receivable. Maybe it is stuck with the selling of inventory. Maybe it's stuck with some other procedure to production. Somewhere the process is stuck. That's why the cycle is not turning. So your objective is to make sure that you convert this cycle. You finish this cycle as fast as possible. Faster you can finish it, more money will come into the company company will be richer. Important elements that you look into when you are going through this cycle. Timing of the cash flow. When you are purchasing from supplier, when you have to pay them, how much you have to pay them. Also, when you are selling to your customer, when the customer will pay, what, what time the customer will pay. So you need to set the timing of cash inflow and cash outflow. It is not only the size that is important. Size is the second issue. First issue is the timing. When is the cash flow coming? When is the cash flow going out? When you need to pay, when you are going to receive. This timing must be matched. If you cannot match the timing, there would be a maturity gap. If there is a maturity gap, you will have to wait for the payment to come in. And if the payment is taking too much late from your customer, you will have to go to a bank loan, which is costly. Next is size. You need to also look into how much you have to pay and how much you are receiving. In order to match this size, you need to understand because the amount that you are receiving should be used to pay for amount that you have to pay. So your receivable will decide your payment, your payable. How much you are receiving, when you are receiving, how much you have to pay, when you are paying. If you cannot match the size, we call it a dollar gap. There is a formal name, they call it dollar gap. First one is called maturity gap. Second one is called dollar gap. Okay, uh, first one is also called duration gap. First one, 
timing of the cash flow. If there's a mismatch in timing, they call it duration gap. Second one is the size of the cash flow. If you have a mismatch in size, that means cash outflow is larger than cash inflow, there is a um, dollar gap. Both duration gap and dollar gap are harmful for the company. We will try to make sure that these gaps are as minimum as possible. Cost of monitoring cash flow. There is a cost of monitoring. You need to monitor your inventory. There, there is somebody to monitor your sales. There is somebody to monitor your collection. So there is always a monitoring cost. The company has to make sure that the monitoring cost is the lowest. If there is suddenly a problem with your supply, your, your raw material supply, your monitoring cost would go up. You need to talk to your supplier again and again. This is called monitoring cost. The frequent contact with the supplier will increase your monitoring cost. You need to have specific people in order to look into the supplier. Then when you are producing, your production halted for some reason, for natural reason, for human man-made reason, uh, you will also have higher monitoring cost. So you need to make sure that uh, beside the duration gap and dollar gap, your cost of monitoring of this cash flow should be as low as possible. But uh, surprisingly, cost of monitoring cannot be 100% zero. Even if you use technology, nowadays companies use technology to monitor cash flow, but still you cannot make it 100% uh, zero. You would have to incur some monitoring costs because uh, uh, the rational market is absent. There are uh, situations where supplier also doesn't have control on the supply. Also, uh, customer doesn't have control on their purchase. So there might be situations like COVID-19 where cost of monitoring would be very, very high. Working capital is an example uh, given for different types of uh, sector. These are different types of uh, companies in sector, in industry groups. I have compared between 2008 and 2013. Let's see how are the items we are comparing. This is the cash, receivable, inventory, and other item. Okay, so this is working capital. It's not net working capital. This is working capital. And industries are categorized based on percentage of total asset. What is the short-term asset? What is the working capital as a percentage of total asset? So look at the telecom industry, they have the highest 31% uh, of cash and securities, highest. The highest amount of uh, uh, receivable, I think, would be with paper industry. Paper industry is the highest amount of uh, receivable. Also, the telecom industry also have highest amount of receivable. Um, the retail sector has the highest amount of inventory. Retail sector has the highest amount of inventory. Yeah, in the retail sector, as you can see, that they have to take a longer period of time to sell product to ultimate customers. So retail will have highest amount of inventory. The lowest amount of inventory is software. Softwares are basically uh, pre-arranged work. So they will arrange with the company what kind of software they should produce. So it's a pre-arranged work. Therefore, it, there is nothing uh, to report as inventory. As long as the software is ready, they will be able to sell it to the company. And then the others. Now compare this with uh, telecom performance in 2013. Uh, it's around, let's say, 25% or 23% of cash and securities, which, which was 31% in 2008. So cash and securities dropped significantly. OK, still, total short-term asset is, is 55%. It's almost 55% even in 2013. But the cash and securities drop significantly. Okay, now the receivable is still high with the uh, telecom industry, um, and the receivable is also high with software. They get the payment late, but software in 2013 they don't have any inventory at all. And highest cash and securities, cash and marketable securities in 2013 is with the software industry highest cash and securities. They will be holding around 25 to 26% of short-term asset as cash. Now, the highest inventory is in retail. Still, the highest inventory is in retail, uh, similar to 2008. And the lowest inventory is in software. Now, the if you look at the railroads, railroads will have 
less than 10% of short term assets. Same in 2013. They have almost 10% uh, or less than 10% as short term assets. That means remaining 90% in railroad is long term, it's fixed asset. I think you understand why railroad basically they have to have purchase locomotives and build the rail infrastructure. So 90% is fixed asset, only 10% is short term asset. So working capital for them is only 10%. So railroads may need to ask for bank loan in order to pay for their activities or they have to charge the customer uh, a high price in order to get higher revenue to pay for expenses. OK, so let's go to uh, the management of working capital. There are two major sides, as I said before, asset management, short term asset management and short term liability management. In short term asset management, we have three items, cash management, accounts receivable and inventory management. In the liability management, we have three items, accounts payable, accrued expenses or accruals, notes payable or short term bank loan. So we'll, we'll discuss the asset management first and then we'll go to liability management. First item in asset management is cash management. Now we'll, we'll go through these very slowly because there are items that uh, takes a little bit of time to explain. Currently, I'm doing some research on cash management of, of farms, uh, small farms and large farms. So I have some experience of dealing with uh, cash management uh, across countries. Primarily, it refers to the management of cash inflows and cash outflows. So by cash management, we basically means management of uh, cash expenses and management of cash collection. So you need to make sure that cash is collecting faster. You are collecting the cash faster and you have to also make sure that you are paying on time or you are delaying on time, delaying on the payment. Uh, you, generally, we don't suggest that you delay on your payments, but you can negotiate with your with your uh, client and that you want to delay the payment or a specific time period you can set. Company use of cash. Company use the cash for transaction balance. They will use some cash. Possibly they will keep it in the bank, uh, in current accounts or in checking accounts. And these would be used to pay for everyday uh, transaction needs. They will pay for everyday expenses uh, for uh, regular raw materials purchase, um, labor, wages, things like that. Second one is compensating balance. There might be a percentage of cash that has to be held with the bank uh, in order to maintain the bank balance. So uh, the bank will charge you 5%. Depending on the, um, the type of account that you are holding, bank will charge you a minimum balance that you have to keep all the time in order to maintain the bank balance. That is the amount of cash that you have to hold uh, with, the, with the bank in order to maintain the bank balance. The third one is a precautionary or speculative uh, balance. This is this is a balance that you will keep uh, to to meet up sudden cash needs. Now, this uh, sudden cash needs may also offer opportunities. Let's say, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say um, you want to buy some uh, uh, sanitizer, hand sanitizer. So uh, certainly because of COVID-19, you are expecting that the price of uh, hand sanitizer will increase from $5 to $10. So if you have some extra cash, uh, cash balance, you'll be able to take this speculative opportunity uh, that suddenly there is a cash need and you can buy, um, you know, 50,000 pieces of bottles of hand sanitizer because you have extra cash. Now this cash, again, it's a sudden cash need because you are taking advantage and we call it precautionary balance. Also, sometimes you may need precautionary balance to to um, weather out some uh, risk issue. You said you you did not you did not have an expenditure in your list, but suddenly an expenditure came in, and you can use the precautionary balance to pay for that expense. Let's say health and medical expenses. Uh, you might be sick at any time, so you suddenly need some precautionary balance to to keep it somewhere safe, so that you can use it during bad times. Marketable securities are cash 
kept aside for future use and are substitute for cash that earns return. So cash, uh, we generally call it cash and marketable securities. Marketable securities means these are short term investment in financial asset. Uh, instead of keeping cash, remember cash is non earning. You can keep it in marketable securities in financial market. Let's say you can buy some share or some liquid asset. Uh, these assets are so liquid that these are considered as substitute for cash. So whenever you need cash, you can just sell your marketable securities and can collect the cash for payments. Higher cash increases liquidity. When you have high cash, you will increase in liquidity, but decreases investment, thus profitability. So if you are carrying too much of cash, it's harmful. Also, if you're carrying too less cash, you will be affected by lesser liquidity. So what is the objective? It is not to increase the cash amount, rather having a balance of cash with assets that does not sacrifice liquidity or profitability. So you have to manage both sides. Cannot keep that much of cash, that creates profitability problem. Cannot keep so low, so, so uh, limited amount of cash that it creates a liquidity crisis. Now, there is no magic hand or magic formula or magic equation that can help you to find out what is the cash balance that you need. Often the amount of cash would be determined based on your experience. The reason why, you know, when you are applying for a job, and the company is asking for 10 years of experience, 15 years of experience. And those experience are basically to understand that there are many financial decisions that does not depend on any equation. You cannot use equation to decide everything. You need to use your experience to decide how much of cash that you need for a specific purpose. To give an example here, the use of cash payment in 2007 and 2013, we'll use percentage of uh, the payment type. Uh, how these are paid. So using checks, you are paying using credit and debit cards, using credit transfer, using direct debits. So you see these are different countries. And let's take two extreme. Canada, most of credit cards, a greater extent of credit cards. The highest of uh, credit transfer used in Switzerland. They use a lot of uh, credit transfer. And also in Sweden, they use a lot of credit and debit cards for corporate payments. Uh, the highest amount of debit cards, direct debits, direct debits uh, would be used in Germany. And also um, checks, where they use the checks in the US. Most of the checks are used in US followed by French. So they trust their customers, they trust their company, they just use checks and checks are enough good enough for substitute of cash look at germany they don't they don't use checks that much for corporate payments also netherlands uh, sweden uh, also switzerland they don't use a uh, check that much so these these countries generally prefer credit and debit cards or credit transfer or direct debits for payments in 2013, the highest direct payments was in Germany. Uh, check, still, still you see Germany doesn't have checks. Um, Netherlands, uh, they also do not use checks. Uh, the highest amount of check, surprisingly, uh, is in, um, no, sorry, it's not a surprise, it's, it's the same. It's in the US or, or in French. Uh, interestingly, there is another category, e-money, electronic money. You see, Singapore is leading in electronic money. They are using electronic money for payments. Uh, don't ask me, I actually do not understand the difference between electronic money and direct debits. These are also using some form of electronic methods because direct debit is also using e-commerce facilities for payment. But I think by e-money, they are now referring to the mobile-based payments. So you can use, uh, you know, for example, GrabPay and others, they can use simply top-up, the mobile top-ups for payment. So there is a massive, massive portion, I think almost 90% of the Singapore payments, at least at the retail sectors, are electronic money. Uh, no other countries are that much specializing, but look at Italy, they have... Uh, electronic money, 
uh, Netherlands, India using electronic money as well. So there are possibilities coming up in financial market. Uh, credit and debit cards, highest is Canada, uh, followed by a number of other countries like India, they do credit and debit cards, and also US market using a lot of credit and debit cards. Uh, credit transfer will be highest in uh, in Brazil, also in, in, in Germany. They're using credit transfer as well. In Switzerland, the highest in Switzerland, they're using a lot of credit transfer. So what kind of country you are operating in uh, possibly will determine what kind of payment me mechanism you use or how you receive payment from your customer. So these are the methods that you use to collect cash or use to pay cash to your customers and from your clients. Okay, this is uh, this would be two more slides. I will not show the example today because we don't have time, but let me just go through it. And I will return to this in the next class with example. Cash management technique. So once again, what is our objective? We will manage cash inflow. We will manage cash outflow. In order to manage them, we need to synchronize cash inflow. We need to accelerate the cash receipt and we need to do disbursement control. These are the two objectives. Objective number one and objective number two. These are the two activities that we do to manage our cash. This is this. The first one is only summary. So we need to synchronize the cash inflow and outflow and we synchronize based on timing of the inflows and outflows and we synchronize based on size of inflow and outflow. Remember the uh, duration gap and the dollar gap. Duration gap and the dollar gap. We need to match the timing and match the size. And in the next class, I'll show you uh, what are the techniques that we use to uh, collect our cash faster and what are the techniques we use to control our payments. If we can control our payment and you can collect our cash fast, we'll be able to manage our cash efficiently. And in the next class, I will also give you an example, possibly do it in the class, um, or at least I'll try to show you uh, with an example, uh, how to prepare a cash budget. I think you have done it before. So we'll just have a recap with an example, how to prepare a cash budget for quarterly or weekly payments. And we'll try to go through a number of items to prepare a cash budget for a short period of time. Cash budget will help us to manage our cash, uh, to understand what the inflow receipt, we call it, and the outflow, the payments, we call it. And by managing receipts and payments, we will be able to know what is the cash deficit and surplus. And if we have a deficit, we need to collect more cash or control our expenses. And if it is surplus, we need to make sure that we are investing this money so that we can earn more profit. So in the next class, I will start from cash management techniques. I'll give you some background and we'll go to cash budget. We'll give you an example in the class and we'll try to move on from there. Uh, in the next class, actually, we'll have a number of examples. Then we'll have another example on inventory management control control system. The example is already given here. Um, and we'll also have some examples on receivable control, uh, how to manage the receivable. OK, so we'll finish it here today. Uh, it's almost the time, 11.20. Um, so I owe you at least uh, uh, some revision of uh, the previous chapter PPT. I'll, I'll see whether I can add some more explanation. And on this chapter, I'll check whether the examples are uploaded. If not, I will upload the examples. OK, thank you all very much. I'll see you in the in the next class. Assalamu alaikum.